Hi, I'm Cynthia Hunt. Today we're going to be making some simple pieces of jewelry. Jewelry is fun to wear and it's fun to make. It's affordable and fast the way we're doing it ourselves. We're going to start out with a simple beaded earring. So this is a very simple project. The first thing you need is a roughly two inch head bead, an inch long bead, and what I'm going to do, head beads are called head because they have a blob at one end that keeps beads from sliding off the end of it. So what I'm going to do, because there's a pretty little bead at the end of the fish hook finding is I'm going to match that by putting, if I can find the hole, shoot I'll use this one, is putting a bead on top of that other bead and then running this through that. See how it looks a little bit prettier? And then I'm going to put this other bead, the bead without a hole. Sounds like a weird Agatha Christie story. I know it has a hole in it. There it is. These lights, it makes it hard to see. Okay, so then I put another one on there. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get my chain nose pliers and I'm going to grip it so that it is about an eighth, takes up about an eighth of an inch of the wire. And then I'm going to fold the wire at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to get my round nose pliers and I'm going to put that above and below that bend in the wire. And I'm going to bring it over almost all the way. Not all the way, but almost all the way. Then I'm going to get my earring finding and put it on there. And then I'm going to put my bottom part of my round nose plier up at the top instead of at the bottom. And I'm going to bring this wire down and at again at about a 90 degree angle and I'm going to using my fingers and if it gets starts getting difficult I'll get my pliers I'm gonna wrap it around to make it kind of match the wraps on the fish hook earring finder and it's not I know why they call it a fish hook earring finding, but it's because they have a little bit of wrap around here, and they have these little snaffle things when you're fishing that clip on, you clip your hooks onto it, you clip your lures onto it, and that's why they call it a fish hook earring setting or finding. For some reason, they call them all findings. Don't really know why. But we'll go on ahead whoop, and just keep winding until we're just about to the end. Hopefully, you can get two or three different winds around the base of this hoop. And then We'll move it in real close and using our cutters, we will cut very, very, very close, being careful not to cut the end. Uh, well, we're going to cut the end, but we're not going to cut the head pin off of the bead. And to do that, you're going to need to use the part that is smooth against the wire cutter, not the part that has a real big valley or you won't be able to get very close. So you cut the very tip. I'm 
which is sometimes hard to see. There we go. And then you're going to press it down as well as you can against the base of the post. And what I like to do is put this through there so it gives you a little bit of leverage. And now you have a matching set of earrings. So now you've learned how to make a very simple beaded earring. Now we're going to go one step up and make these dangle earrings that I made to go with this necklace. They're made out of paper beads. I'll be using a paper bead, but you don't have to unless you just want to. Let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to do the second type of earring. The ones that you see here have a pierced ear hook with a bead that has a double eye on it that was created by making uh, using a two inch eye pin. You can see it has a loop at one end instead of a blob. And then you make another loop at the other end of the bead after you put it on. So we're going to need a head an eye pin. You're also going to need for the little dangle a head pin that you will put this little bead through and then you will create a loop that you hook on to the eye that has the other bead and the other eye will be used to hook onto the earring finding. And this time I'm making clip-on earrings. I've already made one here so you can see what it's going to look like when I'm finished. But this is the whole earring. Now I had already done a double eye on here and you can see how both of these eyes are parallel to each other. They are in alignment. I don't have one going one way and one going the other way. So I'll be able to hook on the dangle on one side and this little earring part on the other, and then it'll be done. But I want you to see how one of these is made. So I've gotten another pin and I'm going to eye pin. It's E-Y-E eye pin. And what I'm gonna do is poke this eye pin through this paper bead. And this is a one inch paper bead. Basically, you wanna make sure that you have about an, at least a half an inch to an inch, but usually about a half an inch, beyond the top of your bead for making your eye. And you'll see how I'm lining up this eye at the bottom so that it's going up and down. It's not facing me. See, it's not like this. It's going, I'm seeing just the top of the eye. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the top of my finger even with the top of the bead and I'm gonna fold it to a, like a 90 degree angle. Put it a little bit more. See, now it's like at a 90 degree angle. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my round pliers and hook them right at the point where that bends. And I'm going to make sure that I stay in line with this bottom eye. And I'm gonna wrap this around until it's almost done and then I'm gonna put my things down and I'm going to clip with my wire cutters and always wear some kind of safety stuff. I have glass reading glasses on, so I'm not worried about it, but I don't want you to get your eye poked out. It's like that Christmas story movie. You shoot your eye out, kid. So what you'll do is get your round pliers again, and you're going to pull this forward and curl it around this part on the inside of the plier until it touches 
the part of the the shaft of this bead and there I now have two eyes and you can see that they're both showing or they're both just showing the edge but they're in alignment and that's going to be important whenever we make the necklace later but I'm going to get back to the one that I had because it matches this other one better now I've got this, I've got my finding. Now I'm going to take this head pin and put this little silver bead through it. And I'm going to get my long nose pliers or chain lock pliers, which a lot of them call them. And I'm going to hold on to the bead with that pliers. If I'm using a paper bead, I'm not going to use this, but I've got enough uh, strength and I'm going to go on ahead to have the leverage. I have enough strength in the bead that it won't be damaged by my doing that. And again, I push it off to the side so it makes an angle. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to pull it across, but because there isn't an eye on the other end, I don't have to care what order it's in. So I go almost all the way. And then what I'm going to do is hook this eye, this eye of the long bead, onto here. And I'm going to cut this part of the bead. And then I'm going to get my long tail pliers again, and I'm going to turn it so that it closes so that it can't fall off of this round bead up here. And I'm going to go on ahead and hold this bottom bead, or hold this bottom bead so it'll stop getting in my way. And then I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Trying to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to turn this. And now it is touching or very nearly touching. I'm going to go ahead and get these pliers. I'm going to get that other one out of my way. This takes a little bit of doing until you get used to it. And I'm holding this farther away than I normally do for myself, so I'm not doing it at the same angle I normally do. But now you can see it is up touching the shaft of this, so there's no way this little bead is falling off. And it's now in place as the dangle on this bead. So the only thing left is to add this top eye and hook it on to this little piece of this finding, which you can tell is kind of bent off at an angle. And I'm going to get these pliers and turn, making sure that the dangle stays out of my way. I'm going to put it on this one and it's sturdy and I'm going to bring it all the way up to where the top part of the finding and the top part of that. And they very cleverly put the connection on the very top of this, so there's no chance of it just falling off. But here we have a second clip-on earring to match the first one. And there you go with another earring that this one has a little silver dangle. Now that we're done with earrings, we're going to move on to bracelets. I'm going to make help you make a simple beaded bracelet. 
the first things you're going to need are some wire. I'm using bead along highly flexible wire, a clasp for your bracelet. We're going to have several tools including long nose pliers, round nose pliers, wire cutters, and a crimp bead plier. We're also going to need some crimp beads and crimp bead covers. And I'm going to add in, of course, beads. Okay, so we've done our earrings. Now we're going to move on to the bracelet. And I'm going to take about nine inches of beadalon wire. And this is wire. It's very flexible and very comfortable to work with, but it doesn't fall apart like, say, fish line, and it doesn't wear out the way that regular cord or string does. So I'm going to get my wire cutters and cut this off. And beat along and soft plex are the two, but they are very, are the two best known, very good beading wires for non-seed beads. Now what we're going to do is we are going to first, we are going to string on a crimp bead. What is a crimp bead? A crimp bead is a bead that is designed go, to let you make a little loop with it. And I'm going to go on ahead and get my lobster clasp because I want something that I can do one-handed. Always think about what you can do one-handed. There are a lot of different clasps that you can use, but what you're going to do is put this back through this bead. It's kind of a U-turn. And then you're going to pull it tight with just a little bit of give. And now you have your clasp on with your crimp bead. Then I'm going to get my crimping pliers. And if you look real close, we may not want to do a close up. There are two little holes in here. One, the one towards the outside is a very smooth little oval. And the other one is kind of shaped like a kidney bean. So you can see that one is real smooth, and the other one kind of is almost like a squashed looking heart. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take our crimping bead and put it in the second one, in the one that's shaped like a kidney bean. That, see how it has a little dent in it? We're going to put that, lay it down in that little groove in the bottom part, and then we're going to press down. Chomp. And then, see how it makes a little dent in the bead? Can you see it? Good. Then we're going to turn the bead 90 degrees so it's up, and what we're going to do is put it in that first hole and chomp down again. And what that is going to do is it is going to bend that bead over. So now it's folded over on itself and that means this is not gonna come loose. That is just not gonna happen. Next thing I'm gonna do is get my wire cutters and cut that end wire as close to the bead as I can. That wasn't very close. I'll try it again. There we go. That's better. Now, to cover this up, because it still has a little bit of an end which can prickle, I'm going to go on ahead and get what is called a crimp cover bead. And these crimp cover beads, you can tell they're shaped kind of like a U. And they're hollow on the inside so that you can put, let me see if I can get some pliers so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. But they're hollow on the inside so that you can fit your crimp bead 
down in there and then hold it into place once it's in and then you can fold this over gently until the edges of that crimp cover touch and now it just looks like a nice smooth bead. And that is how you get the clasp onto your wire. Now, we're done with that, we'll move on to the next step. Now for the fun part, stringing the beads. So what I'm doing here is I'm using, I'm alternating quarter inch paper beads that have been hand rolled with what are called spacer beads. So I have a quarter inch paper bead on here and now I'm going to get a spacer bead. If I can find the hole, these lights are hard to work with. Oh, there it is. And the good thing about this beetle on wire is that you don't need a needle. You can just use it just like this and then get it in the hole of the paper bead. If I can find the hole. I know it's there. There we go. Whoop. Takes a little patience, and I have a lot of different lights, and I'm doing it from a different angle. But see, you just put the bead on and string it on down. Then we're going to do another spacer bead, and these are basically called spacer beads just because they create a little bit of space in between the beads, and it also does a great job of dressing it up a little bit. If these were just all paper beads, it would look okay, but with these little spacer beads, it gives it a little bit of pop, and you will see a lot of times that they will go on ahead and just kind of give it a finished look. It makes it look a little bit more professional. And make sure that your spacer beads, they come in, these I'm just using plain round shiny spacer beads, but they come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. And I tried several others just to set them next to these and they were just way too big. They kind of overpowered my paper beads and I did not want to do that. So go on ahead until you've got about seven or eight inches. See how much slack you want in it and then give yourself about an additional half inch. Well, yeah, about a half an inch so that it'll be comfortable on your wrist. If you're making this for somebody else, you may need to see how what size bracelets they generally wear and what length they are. If you're giving it as a little surprise gift, measure a bracelet that they wear a lot to make sure you get a size they'll enjoy wearing. So now we'll move on to our next step. Having added our beads to our bracelet, we're almost finished. There's only one thing left, adding the clasp. Okay, so we already put on the lobster clasp at the beginning of our string of beads, and then we had the crimp bead, and then we put on our beads. Now, I wanted to finish out with a paper bead so that I don't have a silver spacer bead followed by a crimp bead. I want them to look silver, paper, silver, paper, silver, paper all the way along so it'll look kind of more like it does at the beginning of the lobster clasp. So what I'm going to do is the same thing I did when I was putting on the lobster clasp except this time I'm going to put on the crimp ring then I'm going to put on a jump ring and this is just a little silver ring and I like to make the colors all match and make sure that your jump ring winds up on 
the right side of your crimp bead. You don't want it, you want it to be hooked inside the crimp bead. You don't want it in the side, this little loop. You don't want it to be on this side, you want it to be on this side. So I'm going to move this crimp bead down just a little bit. Not a whole lot because I'm going to have to be able to cut it. And so I've got a nice comfortable loop about the same size as I have on the other side where I have the clasp. I'm going to move it down just a little bit towards the beads. And then, because I don't want to have too much slack, I don't want it tight, 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 because I want to have these be able to stay loose so that they can curve. If you do it too tight, they'll be like a stiff little stick. And that is not what I want. So I'm going to get my crimper bead again, my crimper pliers. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room because we're going to have that crimping bead, which is kind of big, and put it again in that second from the end kidney bean shaped thing and put it right into that little valley and crimp. You can feel it. Then turn it 90 degrees and put it in that first one in that little valley for the first one and crimp it there so it folds it over. And now that sucker's not going anywhere. So I'm going to get my wire cutters and cut nice and close. Without cutting the main part of the wire. You don't want to undo all the work you've done. And these wire cutters are not real sharp. But there we go, they do the job eventually. They've seen a lot of wear and tear. Now I'm gonna get my crimp bead on there, making sure I don't get the jump ring. And I'm gonna fit my little crimp bead cover in there and get my trusty pliers. I'm gonna try to do this at an angle where you can see what I'm doing which is not easy. Put it on here. And it fits in there. And then I'm going to get my pliers and gently squeeze it shut. And that way it's covering that and there's just a tiny bit of slack in there and now whenever I put this on I'll have this jump ring which gives me a nice ring to put on my lobster clasp and I've got a finished bracelet. We finished our earrings and our bracelet now we're going to do a necklace but it's not going to be like the bracelet we're going to be making something a little more like this, only on a smaller scale. Let's get started. The first step we're going to take in making our necklace is learning how to make a dangle for the bottom of the beads. So, just like we did with the earring, the second type two earring, we're going to make a dangle and you can see how I've got little dangles at the bottoms of different points in this necklace and you're like what on earth is she doing but this will make sense it's a little simpler version of the necklace that I showed you earlier but this is going to still have just a few steps and the first step we're gonna have is we're going to make this dangle so I'm going to get my pliers on here at a diagonal so I can push away from myself and make that little right angle just like we did with the second earring 
and then I'm going to get my round pliers and put them as close into that bend as I can and then bring that toward me. Now, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to clip this, but I am not going to finish it until I have scooped on the three pieces, the three beads I want attached to this one dangle. So I'm going to go ahead and clip it, but I'm not going to finish it off just yet. So that's where you need this dangle to be, where it's still open, but it's got that bead on there. Now we're going to make a double bead double eye, which is the part that you'll be attaching later to pieces of chain to make it into a necklace. Okay, now we've got that dangle. I've got to do another double eye using a two inch thing. So what I'm gonna do first is I am going to go on ahead, push it through, just like I did with the earring. I'm gonna make sure it's in alignment with this eye in the pin. So I'm gonna hold this and put my finger up here and push it directly away from me so that it's in line with, and that thing keeps moving. I may have to hold it with my pliers. Bring that down and I'm gonna bend it to a 90 degree angle. Now it's in line with that other eye. I'm gonna get my round pliers and have one below that and one above it and bring it over towards me. Then I'm going to trim it. Make it a little bit smaller with my wire cutters and then move curve that eye all the way around so it is on this bead along with the other one. They're a little bit turned because the holes in these are a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do, because this happens sometimes, is I'm going to hold one of these eyes with each of these pairs of pliers and then I'm going to twist so that they are now in the same plane. They're now on the same angle. And that's how you do the double eye on your bead. What you're going to do next is we are going to get this little dangle that we just made and we are going to hook all three, heaven help us, of these double eyed beads because you're going to put, wind up putting a double eye on pretty much every single one inch bead in this necklace. And got one there. And don't be afraid to just pick them up if you need to. And there's one. And there's one. And then I'm going to get those double-edged beads, my round pliers, sorry. And that one bead fell off the double eye, but that's okay. Don't freak out if that happens. Because what you're gonna do is once you've got all three of these on here, you're going to grab it, put your round nose pliers in there. Now I may just use my chain pliers. and pull this thing so it closes. 
There it's a little bit closer. I'm going to grab the end. I don't want to have any of these beads get outside this loop, which is why it's really hard to do because it's getting kind of crowded in there. So I'm just going to use these chain nose pliers again. There's a lot going on in here. Got three beads and the little dangle with its little bead. There we go. And now we have all three of these are on there. And I say all three, but this one bead fell off its double eye. So there it is. So you have three beads that are all together on this one double eye, which is what we needed to have happen. And the next thing we are going to do is do another double eye. And you're like, yet another double eye. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip these so that they're going in the right direction. Which isn't always easy, believe it or not. I've got this one coming down the middle, then I've got this one across the bottom, then I've got this one coming up there, because it's going to go in there with those, and then I've got this one that's going to go up like this one is. And I know it doesn't make a lot of sense right now. It will in a minute. I promise. So, we've got this one. Got this one. Now I'm going to make this one that goes across. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this. I have a spacer bead that I only had two of. I have one on each end that's going out to the chain. And I'm hooking this one onto that between the spacer bead and the one inch bead. And what I'm going to do now is what I've done with the others. I'm going to line it up and then bend it away. And then I'm going to get my round nose pliers, bring it over almost all the way, and then I'm going to clip it. And I'm going to put my brown nose pliers in there again and turn it until that little loop is completed. And the good thing about working with this big a size bead is that it can handle a little bit of work. And again, it's kind of cattywampus. So I'm going to hold these. And now I've turned it. And it's all on the same plane. And the reason it needs to be on the same plane is because the next thing we're going to do is add a jump ring. So that's next. Now that we've got all of our beads made and all of our eyes and dangles done, we'll be able to assemble the necklace portion without the chains using jump rings. Here's how we do that. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to get a jump ring and connect all five, dear heaven, all five of these little beads. You can tell I have a grouping of one, two, three, four, five here, one, two, three, four, five here. And now I'm going to bunch one, two, three, four, five here. And that will be the last thing before we add the chain and the clasp. 
So I'm going to get a jump ring. Now we used a jump ring to let the lobster clasp grab, have something that it can grab onto on the bracelet, but now you're going to see the wonder of the jump ring. Now you can get a jump ring ring, which makes me sound like a phone, and you can, you don't have to, or you can have two pairs of pliers. It's just up to you, but there is a little break in the jump ring right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one pair of pliers on that side, and if you have another pair of pliers, you can put it on the other side, but I'm just gonna put this jump ring ring on so you can see how it works. And instead of pulling them apart like you would a binder ring on a notebook, what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist them in opposite directions. See? And that's what happens. You open it up, and then you can put things onto it. So I've arranged my beads in the order that I need them to go in. She says, messing up the order that they need to go in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with one and put them on in the order that they need to be in order to be happy dancing little beads. Three. I'm gonna scoot that ring a little bit farther away. Right now my thumb's stuck in it. Okay, so I've got three on there and I've got two more to go. And one just came off. That happens, don't worry. Three. Come on, you can do it. I think I'm gonna grab this. And this is one, two. Is that going up or down? I think it's going down. So I'm gonna give this another try. And this happens, and sometimes I have, with the other necklace that I showed you earlier, I would have just about all of them on there, and then one would be twisted, and I would have to take it off, undo its little eye, and refix it. So we are going to do this, and I'm going to this time hold one end of my jump ring with a pair of pliers, so hopefully my fingers won't take up so much space. So I've got one end, we've got one, two, three, feet don't fail me now, four, and five, all on that jump ring. And what I'm gonna do now is get my jump ring ring and move it down just a little bit on this jump ring with my pliers. I'm going to turn it and snuggle it up so that it's closed. And now I have got all of my things on there, and of course one came off. So that happens. Again, don't freak out. These things just happen. So what I'm gonna do is figure out which way that goes, and it goes right in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open it just a little bit with my round pliers. and I'm going to hook it onto that jump ring. And then I'm going to flip this over so I can get that end that I just wrapped on there and close that little sucker. If I can find it. Okay, it came off again. 
So, and this is one of those things, and I know it's like it's, this woman's trying to teach us how to do this. What is she thinking? But, okay, now it's lining up a little better. I'm going to go on ahead, and this time I'm going to line it up between those two. And then get my pliers and curve it back in. So, I hope that didn't hurt your ears when I went bump. So, there we go. We now have, it takes a minute to get it straightened out. We've got two end pieces that are going to go to our chain. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dangles. I added a, a spacer bead onto the eye bead before I did the center one and then added a dangle so it gives it just a little extra length. And then we've got three jump rings and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen paper beads. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add our chain. Okay, the basic part of your necklace is now done, but we still need to add the chain. So now what we're going to do is get a length of chain and I'm going to cut something because I like to use something where on a necklace I can vary the length of it. So because I want this up fairly high, I'm going to cut about 16 inches of chain. That way, if I want to make it a little shorter, I can make it a little shorter. And if I want to make it a little longer, I can make it a little longer. But what I'm going to do is cut into one of these links of this chain. And because these links are so big, I'm not going to need to have uh, a jump ring like I did with the bracelet earlier in this video. So I'm going to give it about an extra inch on one side so that if I want to have it be a tiny bit shorter or a tiny bit longer, great. So I'll make one, I'm going to cut this in half and make one half of the this longer than the other. And I'm going to think now, okay, this is going to be, if I were wearing it, this would be the back side of the necklace. It would be the part that would be facing me when I put it on. And I like to have the clasp, since I'm right-handed, on my right, so I can hold it with my right hand. So what I'm going to do is have the longer piece be on the left and the shorter piece be on the right. And now I'm going to get two more jump rings, just like the ones I used to hold these beads together. And I'm going to get my jump ring ring. Keep on going, ring ring! And grab one of these jump rings and find the little join and there's the join and I'm going to grab this with one side and twist with the other and then I'm going to put it through the chain on one end the last link in the chain and then I'm going to put it through the eye next to that little bead that spacer bead, the round one. And then I'm going to put my jump ring back in that hole. Whoops, don't know my own strength. And turn it. I'm gonna get another pair of pliers. Cause that jump ring has like one groove in it that's too small and then one groove groove in it that's really big but see how nice and close that is now so that is already on there 
I'm gonna get my other jumper ring. Jump ring. It's not a jumper ring, it's not a British turtleneck. And I'm going to put one pair of pliers on one side, one pair of pliers on the other side, twist, a little bit more, twist, and I'm gonna put the chain, the last link of chain on my chain, and this little eye from my eye pin, and then I'm going to turn them towards each other. And sometimes you have to kind of play with them a little bit. Now they are nice and snug to each other, and we have our chain on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our clasp. And because we only have to add it to one side so that it can go wherever on here I want it to, I'm going to go on ahead and get a little lobster clasp. And I don't have to have a jump ring on the other side. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. But for the lobster clasp, the clasp itself, you're going to need another jump ring, one more jump ring. And jump rings are just fun. And they come in, if you can see, all different kinds of colors and different sizes. And that's helpful because sometimes when you're putting a whole bunch of stuff onto one jump ring, you need it to be pretty big. So I'm going to grab it with one pair of pliers, grab it with the other pair of pliers, and twist, and put the last link of chain on there. And then the little hole in the lobster clasp Spling, and it's on there. Was it that fast and easy? And then I will close this little jump ring. And it's right up to each other. You can barely tell there was ever any kind of parting of the ways there. So now I can go on ahead and put the clasp wherever I want to on here so it can go with different outfits and have different neckline lengths. And here's what it's going to look like. Put it right side up again. Okay. And there we have a necklace nobody else is going to be giving this Christmas, or birthday, or anniversary. Now we're done for this video. You've learned how to make two different kinds of earrings, a beaded bracelet, and a pretty original necklace. So if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to be notified when we have new things posted, click on the bell. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.